Hey everybody, welcome back to my coverage of the Pog Champs 3 tournament. This is the second championship quarter semifinals match. Rain Wilson versus Benji Fishy. And after this, we will know who is playing in the final. We know Sardosh is one of those competitors, but this match will determine the second competitor. We've seen great chess from both of these players. I honestly don't know who the favorite is. Benji is the rating favorite, but I, I can honestly see this match going either way. And I bet whoever loses will be devastated that they don't make the finals. Uh, so let's not waste any more time. Let's see how this match went. Rain Wilson versus Benji Fischi, and Rain has the white pieces. We see e4 from Rain and e6 from Benji going for that French defense setup. d4 and d5 and e5 from Rain, an advanced French setup. Sort of a new style of position from Rain. We've often seen him going for these uh, Fien Keto setup system-like positions in his previous matchups. So it uh, looks like he's learned some opening theory for this matchup, and we'll see that uh, as this game progresses. We have c5 from Benji and c3. This is all um, all theory. This advanced French opening is all about pressuring d4. Black wants to pressure d4, and white wants to uh, defend d4. We have queen b6 and knight to f3 now, knight c6 and a3, knight to h6, and bishop d3. This is all theory, so I think both of these players had coaches that they kind of knew that they were going to play this opening. And so they sort of prepped lines for this specific opening because both players played this opening really well and according to Grandmaster Theory. So uh, both players playing very well so far and let's see how the game continued. We have Bishop D7 from Benji and Bishop to C2 from Rain. This is still a theory. We have C takes D4 and C takes D4. And this is actually probably the first inaccuracy from Benji uh, that we see. And you, you don't want to take this pawn on c4 because after c takes d4, well, now this knight can come to c3. And that's basically white's main disadvantage of playing the advanced French is that this knight can't really come to c3 or one of the main disadvantages, I think, in my opinion. Um, and so by taking this pawn, you're just allowing white to get their knight to c3 very easily. And so, um, yeah, it it's, wouldn't, wouldn't be my recommendation to take this pawn. I would just leave this tension here as black. But this happens anyway, and just a very, very small position on inaccuracy. Still, both players playing very excellently so far. Uh, we have knight to f5 from Benji attacking this d pawn one, two, three times. So the only way to defend here as white is to play bishop takes f5, which Rain does. We have e takes f5 and now castles, bishop to e7, and now b4 from Rain, castles, and knight to c3. Um, and here you have to defend this d pawn. You have to play bishop d6. It's the only move that defends your d pawn. And this bishop is going to be weak. It's going to be basically a tall pawn for maybe a majority of the game, but sometimes that's just how it is for bishops. I mean, this bishop is a great blockader of this e pawn. It's a great defender of this d pawn. So, I mean, it, it is doing something. It, it has a very important job here, um, even though it, it may not seem very active. Uh, sometimes bishops, you just gotta tuck them away or uh, use them as a defensive piece in the early game and then during the later game when every when the position opens up they can really become active you may see a lot of uh, in a lot of master games masters will tuck their bishop on f1 or as black they may tuck their bishop on f8 and you may think like why why did they do that the bishop's not really doing anything there the reason is they're just getting their bishop out of the way so that their other pieces can have more space and more mobility to activate and uh, sometimes it's also used as a defensive resource for the king if the king has castled kingside. Um, and basically the bishop will become a very nice piece later in the game when the position opens up, especially in the end game. So here you definitely have to play bishop e6 as Benji. But Benji, I think he, he must have missed this knight takes d5 threat because instead he played f6. Not only does this not defend this d5 threat, it also weakens your king. I think Benji's idea here was he wanted to break down white center, but um, yeah, you got to defend this d5 pawn. That's really the only thing you can do here because black's position just falls apart after this. So Rain does see this. He plays knight takes d5, forking the queen and the bishop, but you can play queen d8 and defend both of them. This is the only move for black. Uh, but now we have rook to e1 from Rain, just building up a lot of pressure in the center. 
Uh, so here, Benji tries to defend with bishop to e6, which is a good try. Uh, but here, just one way that Rain could have won this is by playing knight takes e7. And after queen takes e7, uh, we could have uh, first e takes f6. And after queen takes f6, uh, now we could have bishop g5. Because uh, you want to play d5, but you don't want to hang your rook as the pawn is currently pinned. So black could try playing queen f7 to prevent d5. But now we can sacrifice our rook for this bishop. And after queen takes e6, now we can play d5. Uh, and we would get two pieces for the rook, which is generally, fav generally favorable for the side with two pieces, especially in these open positions. Uh, so white would definitely have the advantage here. But... We do not see knight takes e7 from rain. Instead, we see knight to f4, but white is still doing very well here. So uh, we'll see what happens. We see f takes e5 from Benji. Uh, and uh, here, I mean, I think Benji may have been flustered from this position. There's a lot of threats and, you know, the position isn't the most pleasant. But this knight f4 move did attack this bishop on e6. So got to do something about it. Bishop d5, I think, would have been the best try. Uh, but... We have f takes e5 instead, and this simply hangs the bishop. Not only does it hang the bishop, but it's now also a fork on the queen and the rook. So you're, lo you're losing a bishop, and now you're losing the exchange. So you will be down a whole rook here as Benji, and um, it's going to be very hard to come back from this when you're playing someone as strong as Rain. So we have queen d7 now, and knight takes f8, rook takes f8, and let's see if Benji can hold this to a draw or if Rain can convert this. We have knight takes e5, um, forcing more trades. You are up a rook here, so you want to get those trades in as rain. Also, just picking up a pawn. Benji realizes that this trade will occur, and he doesn't... Uh, so he, he just initiates it in the first place. Knight takes e5, which I think is fine here. We have rook takes e5, and now bishop f6 going after this d4 pawn. But first, rain saves this pawn in a very nice way. First, he plays queen b3 check, so unpinning his queen from this d pawn and then after king h8 now he plays rook d5 uh, also now this rook is defended so attacking and defending um, and this was a very nice uh, resource for rain to save this d4 pawn we have queen to e8 now and bishop to b2 so benji was threatening back rank checkmate you got to defend against that as rain so this bishop b2 now the rook defends we have queen to f7 pinning the rook to the queen so uh, right now I don't know if black is threatening anything right now, but it's just good to get out of those pins so that your pieces are more mobile. We have queen to f3 by rain, and this does get out of the pin, so very nice job from him on that. Uh, we have rook to c8 now from Benji, uh, and here maybe you would think about playing g6. It does weaken your king a little bit, but on the other hand, you probably want to hang on to this f5 pawn. Uh, this rook c8 move, now you're allowing white to take this f5 pawn, which rain does with queen takes f5, now also hitting the rook. We have rook to e8 and queen to d7, rain going for those trades. Rook to e7, Benji declines, and queen to f5. Queen to e8 now threatening back rank checkmate again. So here the best try for white, or, or the best the best way to defend as white, I think is just h3, and now you're never going to get back rank checkmated. I mean, you still could if this bishop somehow made it to this diagonal. Um, but that would be a while. This would at least get rid of this threat for, you know, the foreseeable future. Uh, but instead we have bishop c3, which still defends up against this back rank, but, you know, it, it's just not, it's very tricky. It, you know, it's very tricky. You, if this bishop is ever deflected away from this diagonal for any reason, then uh, you, you could still be susceptible to these back rank tactics. So it's just better to get rid of this weakness while you can instead of trying to defend the weakness. Um, but we have bishop c3 from rain, uh, which, I mean, you know, you're up a rook here, so anything is going to be winning. We have queen to f7 now and rook to e1. Rain still going for those trades. We have g6 now, uh, and actually with this rook to e1 move, rain is now threatening. Rook takes e7, and then after uh, the queen or the bishop takes, uh, then queen c8 check. So... Uh, you got to do something about this, but it's it's hard to do anything here uh, when you're a rook down. Uh, Rain is just doing a very nice job of converting this. So after g6, Rain does go for this. He can actually play rook takes e7 immediately without even saving the queen, because now if you take the queen, then white will 
pick up your queen as well. So we have queen takes e7, and the bishop can't take this because uh, the queen is pinned. So we have queen takes e7, queen c8 now, and uh, after king to g7, then we will have this pin, and the queen will be lost. And this does happen in the game. We have king g7 and rook to d7, excuse me. Uh, queen takes d7, queen takes d7 check, and now reign is up a queen. So let's see this checkmate, or if reign might stalemate, who knows. Uh, probably not. We are in the championship semifinals, but anything can happen. This is pog champs. We have king to h6 and queen takes b7. Picking up those pawns, you could just go directly for checkmate here, but reign is going to pick up these pawns first. We have g5, queen takes a7, g4, and now g3. King g6 and bishop d2. h5 now and d5. Bishop e7 and queen takes e7. Benji fishy sacrificing those pieces. Definitely a good strategy to try to go for a stalemate, but maybe it would have been better to get rid of your pawns before you sacrificed your bishop. Uh, we have king to f5 now and queen to e6, and this is checkmate. So reign takes the first game. Will Benji be able to bring us to a tiebreaker in the second game, or will reign shut out Benji and make it to the finals? Who knows? We'll just have to see. But yeah, really great chess. Both players actually played extremely well this game. There was only that one mistake knight takes e5 or yeah knight takes e5 i think it was um that hanging pawn you guys know what i'm talking about uh, that benji missed and um that sucks that he missed it but uh it, it was just that one mistake that lost him the whole game uh, everything just went downhill after that but um yeah i don't think i have anything else to say about this game or this match so thank you for watching check out the next game in the match over there and check out my pog champs 3 playlist up there thank you for watching stay awesome stay subscribed like and subscribe. I love you guys. I'll see you next time.